Thank you very much, uh, Maya and also Natalie, for the introduction. Um, so you saw the title already, which I picked, and it is a great pleasure for me also to give you an overview of the research which is happening here at the new, newly named Constructor University. Um, I give you here a very quick overview, so you see it's, uh, it's not going to be too much. Um, I'll skip over the first one. This is an older version here. I go directly to the present state of research at Constructor, and then I will be talking about new developments. Uh, actually, just this year, a little bit about uh, research infrastructure, companies driving research at Constructor University, and young researcher initiatives. And finally, I will mention something about the embedding of the Institute of Advanced Studies at Constructor. Now, what about research? at Constructor University. Well, of course, uh, the, uh, we have been here a fully running uh, university, um, and here's an, an overview. Um, already this year in 2022, we uh, have achieved uh, a substantial change, or we have undergone a substantial change uh, by the renaming of our focus areas, uh, former focus areas into the new schools. Um, so we have now a school of science, a school of computer science and engineering, and a school of business, social, and decision sciences, which also roughly structures our programs and the research. Now, research done at Constructor University is funded mainly through national resources, the DFG, and federal resources, and also to a substantial degree by industry funding. So you see here at the bottom our revenues. Uh, each year from research cover about 20% of our total revenues. And you see that we are on showing a good trend upwards, as you can see from the acquisitions achieved in the year 2022. Um, we are carrying out multidisciplinary research across those three schools, which now houses 80 faculty members. So, in the experimental uh, research area, we are <clears throat> focusing on several lines of research. Um, we are working with, uh, of course, uh, experimental projects. Um, and here, uh, in particular, you see research, some featured research with atoms, molecules, proteins, and drugs. Um, shown up here are some channel proteins. Um, the research by uh, Sebastian Springer, shown on the left in the area of immunology, you have already seen. Um, we work with metal oxo clusters. We do spectroscopy. We are watching how molecules permeate through membranes, looking at layered materials, and are also into the design of different types of pharmaceutical drugs, even though morphine is shown here as an example. Um, Another line of research deals, deals with larger things, uh, hardware, robots, cells, objects, and planets. Um, so you have all witnessed the weather here in Bremen this morning, so that's why our robotics scope has decided, well, they may as well do research underwater, so underwater robotics is a big uh, subject. We work in laser spectroscopy, in communications, uh, um, and Rino has, has mentioned the, the uh, Mars colony, so even we have some planetary research going on, um, including research on, on, uh, on planet Mars. Um, and this boils down to uh, large objects like wind turbines, shown here on the left side, organic electronics, and then we move down in size a little bit to the cellular level, also research featured here. Um, moving more, Towards theory, we have uh, strong research lines in pure and applied mathematics. You see here um, topologies, biological uh, networks, random walk processes, um, and uh, network analysis, also quantum gravity featured, in, uh, featured here, or Mandelbrot set. So this is really pure mathematics research, which we are also involved in at Jacobs University. Uh, a strong area is uh, modeling, simulation, and machine learning. 
um, which also finds now a lot of applications in the business, social, and decision sciences. So going from, from global warning up to uh, modeling of, of finance um, or modeling of social cohesion processes, this is all uh, uh, research producing a lot of data which are treated now uh, with machine learning approaches. Um, in 2022, um, several lines of research were featured in, in national and international media. Here you see mining of high-tech metals uh, from the deep sea, gall gallium, gall gall gallium and germanium mining. Um, our top story is at the moment that our analytical chemist found uh, that uh, uh, quinic acid uh, is active against the corona spike protein, which was dealt with in the first session. So uh, I hope you all had a cup of coffee in this setting uh, without masks. Um, membrane carriers, another topic, or a single drug molecule electronics. This is actually an example from our own laboratory um, where we have attached receptors to gold surfaces and um, drug molecules dock to these receptors and then you can actually characterize those drug molecules by measuring the conductance of the different drug molecules. Now, uh, something very important, research at today's university is not only driven by the professors and the faculty members or the scientific staff members. Um, more and more, students become active, and not only PhD students, but students at all level, master students, bachelor students. So we have many successful examples of a student research, also student entrepreneurships. Um, this includes also some former students who continued with their projects which they developed at Jacobs University. A few days ago, you have seen a news feature on a startup funding, 7.5. Uh, million also waste done as a startup project, uh, saving the forests. Um, then we, uh, we have won several prizes and challenges. Um, so the top 50 Google challenge you see as one achievement, third rank in the Robotics Cup. Um, so these are major achievements by our students who also actively organize conferences on campus like the TEDx conference shown here on the right side. Um, I would like to say a few words about the research infrastructure. There are many guests here today. Unfortunately, the tight schedule does not allow for lab tours to be scheduled this time. But if you are interested, just contact me. Um, I can also uh, show you quickly uh, some of the infrastructure or the labs if you are interested uh, later this afternoon. So we have um, several laboratories, most of the experimental wet research in uh, chemistry, biochemistry, biotechnology, physics, um, um, and cell biology is done in the so-called Eon Lab, or the Lab 2, where uh, also actually we have two clean rooms um, incorporated, and large-scale equipment, NMR, AFM, and so on, is also housed there. In the Ocean Lab and Geochemistry Lab, we have facilities for marine robotics as well as for, for geochemistry. Hall one is really, uh, well, let's say the large-scale research with a 3D printer. And that's also where we house a, a company. I'll get to that in a moment on Isoprint. We have a robotics lab there. And also an educational unit, research and education, Ducky Town. You see the picture down here, as well as biology labs. Then we have theoretical labs, the CLAMV, Center for Scientific Computing. And finally, the Behavioral and Social Sciences Lab, which has computerized testing methods, eye tracking, and so on. So we are quite proud to be well equipped. And at the moment, we are revamping all this research infrastructure with an effort, of course, to sharing those facilities in an efficient way. No, it's not moving anymore. Hmm? Five minutes? Five minutes till it's moving? I mean, uh, uh, technology, we need again technology support because the PowerPoint is not moving. <laughs> no, no. 
<laughs> I need, I need. Okay, here, here it continues. Thank you. Um, so uh, just in this year uh, and uh, shortly before, we have uh, um, acquired several new large-scale facilities, confocal laser scanning microscopy, a new compute cluster, X-ray diffractometer, expanded robotics lab, a high-resolution mass spectrometer uh, we are presently applying for. And within the IIS, we are also setting up an advanced uh, materials facility. Cooperation. Cooperation this year has gotten very strong. Besides our existing long-term collaborations with Barry Colorboat, uh, the company uh, producing uh, cocoa products, um, in particular, we are known there in this collaboration to have discovered the ruby red chocolate here. It's one of those uh, large-scale collaborations which uh, is continuing. Um, and also we have strong collaborations with Scheffler and with Roche. Um, Sebastian Springer this morning men mentioned our engagement in the company Tetramer Shop, which has been su successfully sold this year. And uh, the three companies uh, which have come in in the year 2022 is the company Chemdiv, where we uh, have heard one uh, presentation before, focused on drug discovery, the company Anisoprint, focused on 3D printing, and the company JetBrains. Uh, there's just now at this moment uh, an announcement out and about this JetBrains collaboration. Andre, uh, uh, Andre will tell you a little bit more details. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, That's Werner, nice. for introduction. Let me try this. Okay. So JetBrains, I'm not sure how many of you know about the company. I guess if you are in software development or computer science business, you should, but probably some of you don't. So uh, JetBrains is a company which is doing kind of uh, shoes for shoes makers. We are doing software for software developers, for people like us. The company was founded in uh, 2000 in Czech Republic, in Prague, by three Russian engineers. And uh, since then, yeah, for 22 years, it uh, does the software that many, many software developers uh, around the globe are using. In some areas, like for example, Java developers, it is uh, probably the most popular IDE currently being used. And IDE is a tool you use for your job. And uh, the revolution that JetBrains made back in uh, 2000 is to put a lot of technical tasks, which are probably not uh, requires a lot of brain, but uh, very time consuming, to be done by IDE, not by the person. So the, the programmer can uh, concentrate on the tasks that are more brain intensive. Uh, yeah, here is some marketing wordings, which I would probably not read. But the code is our passion is really true. And that is uh, the benefits of doing something that you yourself use. Because, you know, when you're a programmer and you're doing an ID and that use this ID that makes this code is our passion something very big. Uh, speaking about history, the very first tool that JetBrains released was IntelliJ IDEA back in 2001. It was an IDE for Java. Uh, since then, we used the same technology to support uh, essentially each and every programming languages which uh, is around. So there is a whole timeline of the products. Also, in 2012, we released our own programming languages, Kotlin. By that time, uh, Java programming language was very popular on the one hand and not very good on the other, other hand, because it was pretty old and a lot of new ideas were, were in introduction into it, introduced into it. So we developed our own programming language and it's currently pretty popular, and especially for mobile applications for Android. It is uh, declared by Google as a standard programming language for Android development. And uh, as you can see, the uh, amount of users is growing and growing and growing, not very exponentially, unfortunately. 
but uh, fast enough. And by revenue, we are closing to be a unicorn, not yet. I think it will be 600 million this year. So not bad either. Uh, some awards and recognitions uh, are here. So the company is recognized and its tool is recognized by industry. But for us, the most important is recognition amongst uh, people like us. I mean, software developers. And uh, what is important about JetBrains is that it never had a big marketing or sales department because the products are always sold by word of mouth. Uh, you hear from your friends that uh, the idea is great, you buy it himself, you ask your boss, and voila, your company you use it. So more importantly than this is people who like it. And uh, probably more important than all of this for this auditory is uh, the JetBrains research. The JetBrains research is an initiative we launched in 2012. By that time, JetBrains already had a lot of projects in the area of education. Because uh, back in 2010, uh, when I joined the company, I managed to convince uh, owners, uh, Sergey Dmitriev and uh, other top people there, that we have to work closely with education, with universities, etc. And we uh, first started to have the big group of teachers who were uh, teaching students. And then we realized that for these teachers, we need uh, to provide some activities that they can do when they are not teaching. Because if you are only teaching, you are getting behind of the cutting catch. And uh, it was in Russia. And in Europe, it is not uh, something it is typical stuff. The professor is doing research, he's doing science, and also he is teaching students. But in Russia by that time, it was not very often the case. And many uh, teachers or professors in their free time were software developers. They were programming or working for companies. Unfortunately, it led to them to leave the teaching soon enough. Because when you are a programmer, and they are good, you are a good programmer, uh, it, it's, there is a tendency that you become a full-time programmer. And so, so we copied this uh, scheme from the Europe universities and we created JetBrains research. We started to pay uh, professors the same amount of money they can earn in the university or in the company in the university. So they don't have to switch to be a programmer just to earn money. And that was just technical goal but it turned out uh, that if you get a very good person and set up a task for him he be to become a researcher on scientist, he or she became very good researcher on scientist. So in uh, 10 years, uh, many of the groups in JetBrains research are uh, having publications in the very high level uh, conferences like A-STAR conferences. And what is important also is that all of this um, laboratories and research group, they are not only about programming, about something important for jet brains. We uh, have some in robotics, some in biology, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, including sociology, for instance. Unfortunately, um, unpleasant events that happened this year, and uh, because of this event, we left uh, Russia completely, and that hit our research uh, group pretty hard because some of the people didn't join us. But still, the department is pretty good. And it is uh, one of the point of collaboration with uh, Constructor University. So speaking of the collaboration, um, I should say that I know Serge Bell and uh, Stanislav Protasov, another guy from this uh, group for quite some time, since uh, 2007, I guess. And we were always talking about education and uh, universities and science and how it all should work together. And finally, this year, uh, the stars got together and we started a very good joint project. This uh, educational program in Constructor University together with JetBrains. And uh, soon enough, it became clear, clear in, for me and for the university that there are much more uh, possibilities in this collaboration than just the educational programs. So at the moment, we are talking about uh, three parts uh, collaboration. The first and basic parts are two educational programs, which uh, started this year. We brought uh, 
about 100 something students from Russia who joined this program, top level students. And I hope that they will be the scientists and staff, some of them in the university moving forward. And the next step, the next two steps is to um, project the JetBrains research to university. So we are creating, uh, in, uh, as a part of the Institute of Advanced Study, uh, the laboratories of JetBrains at uh, Constructor University, uh, which will be working in close collaboration. And the third part, which is currently developed in the initial phase, is a for-profit education. For example, uh, Kotlin uh, education, IDE training, etc. So uh, it is very, very good collaboration. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, thank you for Constructor University to, uh, to have us. That's it. Thank you very much. Andre, for the presentation, you just heard jet planes. It's all about people. Um, also, there's a lot happening in, uh, at Jacobs University. So here you see faces again. Of, uh, of faculty members and their team uh, who have been featured this year in the context of various research projects. Um, but um, we are presently expanding. Uh, we are expecting several waves of new hires. So already in 2022, we have advertised more than 10 positions, assistant professor and lecturer positions. Um, and we are expecting a second wave in 2023. So therefore, we are really expecting the largest growth in faculty here at Constructor now in the next year um, in several areas. In order to reach critical mass, we need not only more people, but also new structures. In this context, um, the Institute of Advanced Studies um, comes handy with four different units focused on quantum and advanced materials, quantum business science, machine intelligence, and computer science, as well as mathematical modeling. Um, so also in this context, um, we are expanding. Um, we are looking for uh, new researchers, also uh, uh, faculty members, um, in areas like machine, machine learning for sciences, topological data analysis, econometrics, and so on. And again, we are expecting that uh, more than 10 junior and senior PIs will join us in the year 2023, very likely also from, from JetBrains. Um, so with that, I'm through. Thank you very much. <laughs>